Okay, welcome back everyone. Hope you're all fine and dandy as usual. And today we've got an interesting build order for you. I hardly ever play Franks and I hardly play Arena, but today we're combining both. And we're going to go for about a 17 minute castle drop with one stable knight's production to support your villagers and attack with. And then very quickly after that, you'll support your knights with throwing axemen. Your opponent's probably going to go want to go for spearmen and pikemen. You've got your throwing axemen in, in support of your knights. It's going to be a 24 plus 2 population build order, which means you're going to have 24 population before clicking up to Feudal Age from Dark Age. And then once you're in Feudal Age, you'll build two more villages before you click up to Castle Age. Now you will need to push your deer in, but it's fairly easy on Arena, you've got plenty of time. You want to start off with six villages on sheep, and you will want to push in two ibex before your first four. I mean, if you don't have specifically timing the ibex down to a T, it's not a big problem. Just to, you know, want to save as much rotting as possible. Every little helps, but it's not dependent on that. We've got six on food. We're going to send the next four villagers to wood. Now, I'm just going to take this opportunity to say that if you want the written version of this build order, do check the description of the YouTube video, and it will give you instructions on how you can grab it. Okay, we've got the third villager to Woodline. Let's fit, speed things up a little bit. Okay, fourth villager to the Woodline. Now the next villager is going to go grab the boar. And then after this villager's come out, the next villager is going to go towards the Woodline, build two houses, and then go to the wood. There we are, two houses and the wood. You can see here, I'm just going to delay things a little bit. Um, just to reduce the rotting, but you know, you can take it then if you want to. And the next villagers are going to go to build a mill and then berries. So we're going to want to have four villagers on berries for now. But this villager plus the next three villagers are going to go to berries. Speed things up a little bit. Now we're going to push another ibex in as well. Just one before we get the next ball. But there we are three villagers so far we're going to wait for one more and then we're going to grab the second ball so i was about to push this ibex in but i thought better of it let's just grab the other sheep that are around the tc and arena so the next villager is going to grab the ball and then the next three villagers are going to go to berries so in total before before we kind of go to gold we're going to have seven villagers on berries so grabbing the ball next three villagers to berries Again, I slightly delay things a little bit. Fine if you take it then, though. Okay, once you've got seven on berries, the next villagers are going to go to gold. Do you want two villagers on gold? Now we're going to push another ibex in as well. Okay, now that we've got two on gold, the last villager before we click up is going to go to berries. So in total, you have eight villagers on berries before you click up to feudal there's the h1 and we've clicked up to feudal age now we just want to slowly take our herdables we've got eight under the tc so they should all fit around each herdable sometimes it bugs out a little bit and there's a villager waiting around just keep an eye on that you'll want to take one villager from the wood line to make a house and a barracks and we're well on our way to feudal age now Okay, so we're almost up to Feudal Age. We've taken one villager from the wood line to build a house and a barracks, and we've also scouted our opponents. We want to look for where we can secure a stone pile. We can't really. There's one stone pile here, but we can't really drop the castle there. So we're going to drop the castle around about here and get this stone. The villagers will build the castle, build a couple of houses, and then get the stone. Now we have to think about what we do next. Once we hit Feudal Age, we want to drop a stable and a blacksmith using two villagers from the wood line, one village on each. And we're going to queue up two villagers, of course, preemptively. They're going to be going to the straggler tree. So far, so good. We want to keep an eye on these berry villagers. These berry villagers, after they've taken the berries, will go to stone. Keep taking the herdables. We all need that food to click up. We're almost there with the food. Now, once these two production buildings, well, the stable and the blacksmith, once these buildings are done, we're going to click up straight up to castle edge. And there we are, castle edge there. Villagers from the 
mill are gonna go to drop a mining camp as soon as we can afford it on the stone. Now once the mining camp foundations have been placed we take the two villagers off the straggler tree and we put them to gold. So far so good. Once the villagers are done underneath the TC and the herdables are all taken these villagers will go to straggler trees. We're gonna click double bid axe as well and of course the franks get horse collar for free so we don't have to worry too much about that. And what we'll want to do once we've kind of stabilized things a bit we'll want to preemptively click up loom because don't forget loom your villagers are going to want to go forward to build the castle you need loom for that you will drop farms from the villagers underneath the tc as soon as you hit 60 wood okay our opponents in feudal age as well so we'll see how things turn out go off to stragglers and build farms So far, so good. Try and keep an eye out on your enemy scout as much as possible so you can try and sneak your villagers there. Let's speed things up a little bit. Okay, now that we hit Castle Age, you'll want to queue up knights, queue up villagers after Loom's been researched. Your villagers on stone, once they've hit 480 stone, you'll want to build a house and send them forward. At that point, once they go forward, you'll probably have a knight coming out as well to support. And you've always got your scout as well. There you are. There's the knight coming forward now. And the villagers will go to straggler tree from the TC that you're, you know, the villagers you're training will go to the straggler tree and drop farms as soon as you hit 60 wood. So knight going forward, villagers going forward, castle foundation goes down. You want your castle foundation roughly about three, three tiles away from your enemies arena wall and probably around about six tiles horizontally away from your enemy's gate just to avoid them seeing it and spotting it okay keep dropping the farms and keep the night production up very important there go the villagers they're going to build the castle now we will get housed for only a moment but once the castle goes up, of course, that gives us population space. Now, we want the villagers to build houses as well as soon as the castle goes up. There we are, houses go down. And then we want to probably at this point actually stop producing farms momentarily, just so we can get 100 wood to build a mining camp for this stone here. Now, we want to attack the gate with our knights and with the castle, of course. And we want to keep up pressure, just keep producing knights. You will want to maybe add in a couple of axemen as well because your opponent's probably going to think about going spears or pikemen if they're in castle age and the axemen are very good at countering that. Very strong combination, knights and axemen together. Back home, just constantly drop farms. The main resources you need right now are food and gold to support the knight production and axemen production. We'll leave the blacksmith upgrades just for now. We want the numbers to be fair and we want the villagers here to get stone to drop the second castle. Now we see our opponent, this is the beauty of having a castle out around about 17 minutes with knights because the knights can uh, you know, deny castles going up. If it was earlier then we wouldn't have the knights and you know this castle will probably go up. So that castle is denied and that's huge. We keep chipping away, keep, keep being a nuisance with the knights and, and axemen and keep flooding in the knights really. Looking good so far. Try and avoid any unnecessary fights of course because we're just going to wait for that second castle drop and then we should be able to defend it with these numbers. Almost there with the villagers on stone. And now that we've got 15 farms we're not doing too badly. 16 farms we can manage to get knights and axemen out pretty well in good numbers. Now the villagers are going to come forward for a second castle drop and that's going to be huge. That will put a lot of pressure on your opponent and probably won't be able to come back from that. And so that completes the build order. Hope you guys found that video useful. Do let us know how you found the build and if you've used it and if it worked for you as well or if it didn't work or if you feel like actually things could be switched around a little bit. I'd be interested to hear your views and yeah hope you enjoyed it and see you on the next video.